So looking at exponential relationships, um, to determine if it's an exponential relationship, one thing I want you to keep in mind that it will be the ratio of the first differences that will be constant. So like in a linear equation or a linear pattern, you have your first difference that's a constant. In a quadratic, it is a second difference that's constant. For an exponential, it's a ratio of the first difference that's constant. I'll show you what the ratio means and how this all works out. Um, so, our exponentials end up being equations that look somewhat like this. y is equal to something that I'm going to call b, and just call it a base, to the power of x. And then it might have a plus or a minus or a times or divide by some other term that we've got to figure out. Okay? So, i.e., it could be something like y is equal to 4 to the power of x plus 2, where 4 is the base, x is to the power, and the little question mark thing we have to figure out is plus 2. So to find out these rules, um, one thing that we want to do is follow as I've got with the instructions here is just check it first for the first and second differences because you won't know looking at it if it's exponential, quadratic, or, or um, linear. So you've got to sort through all that anyways like you would no matter what. So if I check my first difference here, between 3 and 6 I have a difference of 3. 6 and 12 is a difference of 6, 12 and 24 is a difference of 12, 24 and 48, a difference of 24. Um, so my first difference is not constant, so I might check my second difference, and I might just do this in my head in a way, um, but you can write it out. I'm probably just going to rub it off again, just so I have enough space. So if I check my second difference here, I get 3, 6, 12 again. So it's the same pattern, but it's not the same number, like 3, 3, 3, or 4, 4, 4. So I see that my second difference is not constant either. So I know it's going to be an exponential. So I need to find the ratio of the first differences. And I've got here as an idea here to think about putting the bottom number divided by the top number, or writing it out as the fraction bottom over top. And what I mean here is that we've got to think about making a ratio of these so writing out a fraction, but I don't want to go 3 over 6. I want to do it the other way around. 6 over 3. And if I simplify that, I get 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Looking at the next pair, 12 over 6. Again, that simplifies to 2. And 24 over 12 is equal to 2 as well. So what I mean is pick a number below and put it on top of the number right above it for the first differences. So here I can see I've got 2, 2, 2. This is a constant now. So I know I'm going to have an exponential. And what we have here is actually we have found our base, the number that we're going to have in the equation, because the ratio of the first differences, when it's constant, that is the base. So we know now that our base on this one is equal to 2. So this part gets a bit tricky and you can either rewrite the table out so you have more space, but I've tried to make this worksheet so that you've got space in between the columns to put in the information we're going to put in. So what I want you to do is split the table open with a gap. So I'm going to put another column into this table by drawing a line down like that. So I've got x, a gap, and y. I'm going to put the base, which in this case is 2, 2 to the power of x in there. So that's base to the power of x. Now, for each value of x, I'm going to put it into this new little mini equation we've got, which is 2 to the power of x, and see what it equals. So as an example, 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And in your calculator, the power button so 2 to the power of 0, you would write in your calculator 2, there's a little button that looks like an upside down arrow, and 0. That's what you do in the calculator. 
So, 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Going to the next value of x here with substitution, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. In the next spot, x is now equal to 2, so I'm going to say 2 to the power of 2. Because what I'm doing is I'm taking this x value 2 and plugging it into the x there. So 2 to the power of x for each situation, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. So, the next thing I'm going to do is check for a missing plus, minus, divide, or times that I need to use to get me between the middle column, this new one that I've put in, and the y. So I'm looking for what's missing to get me from this number here of 1 over to 3. So I could go plus 2, potentially. So if I think of an idea like plus 2, I'll check it on the next one. Does 2 plus 2 get me to 6? No. So 1 plus 2 gets me to 3, but 2 plus 2 doesn't get me to 6. So let's try a different one. How about 1 times 3? So 1 times 3 will get me to 3. 2 times 3 gets me to 6. Looking good so far. 4 times 3 gets me to 12. 8 times 3 gets me to 24. And 16 times 3 gets me to 48. So in here I have to times each of those by 3 to get to the number that I actually need. So that means my question mark here is going to be the times by 3. So that's what we found. We found our question mark thing, and that's this bit here, finding the question mark. So we're going to write out the rule now using our x and y, or if it was m's and p's or z's and w's, we'd put it into context. But here we have x and y. So I'm going to say y is equal to my base, which was 2, to the power of x. And I found that I needed times by 3 every single time, so I'm going to write times by 3. And that's my new rule. So it might seem like a complex thing, but if you can get your head around it, it's this pattern that will work out every time for you. So again, to recap, I looked at my first differences. They were not constant. I checked my second. They were not constant either. So I went back to my first and did a ratio of the first differences, taking the number below and dividing it by the number above. So 6 divided by 3, 12 divided by 6, and each of those times I got the same number, 2. I split apart my table so that I have 2 to the power of x, and I check it out. I use substitution. I take that 0, and I put it in for x each time. So 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Now x is 1, so I'm going to say 2 to the power of 1. And you can do that in your calculator and get these numbers here, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. And then I had to think about what number can I add or times or divide or subtract to get me from 1 to 3 and from 2 to 6 and from 4 to 12. It has to be the same one for all of them. And in this case, I found that if I times each of those ones in the middle by 3, I get to the y that I'm looking for. So my equation then is 2 with the base being 2 to the power of x times that thing that I didn't know, which was the question mark. Okay. Um, might be a good idea to try another one of the patterns in here on your own and see how you go with it. Um, I'm going to pause and put in some information and then start the video again for one more example. Um, and then you guys might want to check out the answers um, and possibly another video that will go through the rest of these as well if you need more guidance. Okay, so as before, first difference between 11 and 10.5 is actually a negative 0 0.5. It's gone down by a half. So again, these ones I'm just subtracting. 11 minus 10.5, sorry, 10.5 minus 11.5 gets me to 0 0.5. Doing subtraction again, I get negative 0 0.25. Subtraction again between those two, I get negative 0 0.125. And subtraction between these, I get negative 0 0.25. 0.0625. So my first differences are not constant. And if I do it, just to double check, my second differences are not constant either. So 
negative 0 0.25 minus negative 0.5 is not going to be the same as this minus this and this minus this. I can see it, but you can check it in your calculator if you need to. But I'm not going to, just so I can leave spaces for my ratios here. So the ratio, remember we start with the number below and do it on top of the number above. So that's negative 0 0.25 over negative 0 0.5. This simplifies to 0 0.5, or a half, if you want to think about it that way. Going again, negative 0 0.125 divided by negative 0 0.25, 0 0.5. And one more time, just to double check. Again putting the number below on top of the number above it. So you can see my ratios here are constant each time, so my base is going to be equal to 0 0.5. So I can do what I did before and split out the table here, and then I'm going to put my base 0 0.5 to the power of x into the table. But if it's a bit cumbersome and you run out of room, as an example, you can just write it out with more space for yourself if you want. So I could do 1, 2, 3, 4. That's my x. I'm going to have 0 0.5 to the power of x in the middle. And over here I've got other numbers. 11, 10 10.5, 10.25, 10.125. And I'm not going to bother writing out the last one just because I'm running out of space here. So again, I'm going to check 0 0.5 to the power of x here. And actually you're probably noticing on the worksheet I've given you, it doesn't start at 1, it starts at 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, which means I need to change these. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry about that. So, 0 0.5 to the power of 0, 0 0.5 to the power of 0. In my calculator, that equals 1. Next one, 0 0.5 to the power of 1. That's going to give me 0 0.5. 0 0.5 to the power of 2 gets me 0 0.25. And 0 0.5 to the power of 3 gets me 0 0.125. So the next step is to look between the middle column and the outside column and try to figure out what do I need to add or subtract or times or divide by for each of these to get to the appropriate number. So I'm currently at 1. If I need to get to 11, I could times by 11, or I could add 10. So let's check. If I added 10, 1 plus 10 gets me 11. In the next, col next row there, 0 0.5 plus 10 gets me to 10.5. 0 0.25 plus 10 works, and plus 10 works for that one as well. So for each of these, adding 10 will get me to the number that I actually need, going from 0 0.5 to 10.5. So the question mark then, we've solved to be a plus 10. So if I want to write out my rule now, using this kind of general format of y is equal to the base to the power of x, and then the question mark, whatever it is. In this case, y is equal to 0 0.5, my base, to the power of x, and the question mark was plus 10. So that becomes my rule that I would use for the second set of patterns here.